Welcome everyone to the Minnesota ACAC Virtual College Fair. We're excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Greg, I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items. Number one, your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button that you see on your screen, that little black button, to type your questions to our presenters at any time. It'll be up to them whether they wanna handle those questions one by one or all at the end. Remember, this is just one of many different sessions happening today. Be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. And I'll drop that address in the chat for you if you missed it, strivescan.com Minnesota. I'd like to turn over to our first presenter, Karin from Beloit College. Take it away. All right, good afternoon. Um, I hope all of you are missing fun classes or activities to spend some time with us. Uh, if we got you out of that dreaded math class, good on us. Um, I am gonna introduce myself real quick as are our other two presenters. And then we're gonna talk with you about our favorite thing, um, literally my favorite, favorite thing, um, which is college application essays and supplements. Here we are. Um, yeah, back when we didn't wear sweatpants to work. My name is Karen Smith. As I mentioned, I represent Beloit College in Beloit, Wisconsin. I have worked in college admissions at four different institutions um, over my 37 year tenure in college admissions. Uh, Beloit is my alma mater. It is where I started and now I'm all the way back where I started many, many years ago. And I am, I am serious in that uh, the favorite part of my job in addition to meeting students is reading essays as part of the application process. Emily? Thank you, Karen. Um, my name is Emily Grimm. I am the Associate Director of Admission at Lake Forest College in Lake Forest, Illinois. Um, I have been in admissions for eight years. I worked for three institutions, including one graduate health professions institution. So I've had a, a variety of experiences, but I absolutely echo Karen in that the essay is one of my favorite parts of getting to know my students. Um, we'll explain a little bit more later, but it is another way for me to really get to learn who my students are beyond just their, their application. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gil Bell. I am an assistant director for first year recruitment at Seattle University. Uh, so right in the heart of the city of Seattle. Uh, it's, it's certainly very rainy today, um, but uh, Y'all can't see that, so it's all good. <laughs> but uh, I am, uh, I think for me, the essay is so important just because it gives the student, again, as Emily and Card mentioned, just a chance to tell their story, the chance to tell their narrative. But it, it gives me just something that I think, you know, I've read close to about 3,000 plus essays in my time uh, at Seattle U, and I've learned so much about uh, my students, but I've learned about things that I never would have learned about that a student has taught me through their essay. So I'm excited to be here and just um, to, to be here with Emily and Karin just to talk to you about uh, the college application or college essays. Oh, this is not good. There we go. Okay, so here we go. What are we talking about today? We're gonna to talk about three things. Number one, the role college essays play in the application process. Uh, little, little, get ready, it depends. Uh, how to write a compelling college essay. And number three, how to round out your application with awesome supplemental essays, which some of us require. But first, let's start with why this seems like such a big topic. Um, we have more of you registered to join us today than most of our other presentations being offered in the next few weeks. So we know that this is a hot topic for you. Um, and so why, why is that, right? I have some thoughts. We have some thoughts that I'm going to share with you. We're asking you to talk about you. So that's number one, right? 
none of us tend to do that real often, nor do we tend to be as comfortable with that, particularly when we're 17, um, as maybe we're asking you to be. We're asking you to do it in 650 words or less. Like what? Okay, I'm a whole person, 650 words. Many of you may be thinking that the three of us presenting are gonna give you the secret sauce recipe to how to do this and do it well, right? Um, for what the perfect essay looks like, well, we can't do that because you are the secret sauce. Uh, yes, essay prompts. Um, there are essay prompts that will be offered to guide you, but the subject of each prompt, again, is you. Talking about ourselves is not something most of us do very often, so it can seem scary and daunting, particularly when so much else in your current world right now, a little less scary and daunting than last year, but still pretty scary and pretty daunting. Um, it's the only part of your application over which you have complete control in the moment. So let me say that again. Think about all of the different pieces of your application in your essay, what makes it so exciting to us, but maybe scary to you, is it's the only piece in your application that you, only you, have complete control over in this moment. Um, we hope to help you start to think of your essay as a grand opportunity rather than a scary task. All right, the role of your college essay. In general, we're looking for a strong, product and voice. Does it flow? Does it tell a story? Is the writing grammatically correct within whatever creative element you may choose to use, right? You want us to get to the second paragraph. You want us to want to get to the second paragraph. Is the writer, you, able to think analytically? So you're responding to the prompt and are you able to reflect, reflect on that? So can you, can you give us what we're asking for? Um, does your essay give us a hint at what you might contribute to the culture and environment of our particular campuses? Right, that's part of an essay too. It's also important to note at this point that the amount of emphasis placed on your essay during the application review process depends on the individual institution reviewing your application. So it, has a big impact on the way we review applications at Beloit College, but I've worked some other schools at some other schools where it didn't play as big a role. And so that's a very appropriate question for you to ask admissions officers at the various schools that you're considering. But like many things that you're gonna hear in this process, it depends is very appropriate to this, right? So your college essay, how important is it? It depends on the individual school. Okay, so most importantly, your essay is how we get to know you. Otherwise your application may look like this very stock photo that could exist on any advertisement anywhere for anything, right? And so your, your essay is a place where we really get to know you as an individual. You may tell us about something you care passionately about. You may tell us about something you've done. You may tell us about who you are. You may tell us about your role at your school or your family. You get to choose the topic and I encourage you to choose a topic that's comfortable for you and it isn't gonna be difficult for you to write about. Um, and this is also where I insert the warning that only you can convincingly write about you for the purpose of this essay. Got that? So the opportunity cannot be, should not be, to turn this over to a well-meaning parent or mentor, right? Your best friend who you perceive to be a stronger writer cannot write this and will know. Believe me, will know. So we want you to write this essay and it's gonna be fine, right? You're just gonna tell us about yourself. It's also a time, again, where you get to have a little bit of your personality shine. So if you're clever, it's okay to be clever. If you're a funny person, please be funny in your essay because we love funny, 
right? When we've had several serious essays in a row and then we get one with some humor, it's like, oh, this is awesome. However, if you're not a funny person, this is not the time to try to be a funny person in a college essay. Because again, you would be serving up to us something that really is not you. So here's some examples of prompts that many of you may have already seen or are about to see. Um, this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the means, but if you haven't started working on your application yet, your essays yet, this will give you a glimpse of what you'll be seeing. So examples one, two, and three are taken directly from the common application. The common application, if you're not aware of this already, is what it says it is. It's a common application that's used by almost a thousand colleges and universities in this country. So it can be a very, very efficient way to apply to more than one college. Example four, my school is located in the state of Wisconsin. So I gave you an essay prompt that you would see if you were completing an application for the University of Wisconsin system. Um, all of these topics provide general, a general guideline and some general ideas of what you can write about. Um, because they're general topics, they allow for lots of freedom of expression. This is the appropriate time for me to, to, to let you know, because I think some of you are, I, I know you have this question, because students are asking me this question when I'm meeting with them. You do not have to use this, nor would I necessarily encourage you to use your, your main essay as a place to talk about um, what happened during COVID for you or during the pandemic. There is an optional spot on the common application um, that where you can do this. So it's not, this optional area is not intended to be a whole nother essay, right? It's a place where you can just share some of how the pandemic impacted you, maybe your family, your learning situation. I wouldn't necessarily encourage you to use, because last year, the last 18 months was 18 months of who you are. It isn't the whole of who you are. You may choose to use it. I, none of us and, and Yubel and, and um, Emily, I encourage you to chime in when you're presenting. I don't think we would necessarily encourage you not to use it if what happened for you really helped to define who you are as an individual, for sure. But please know that you're gonna have a place on most applications where you will get to talk about that. The other thing I'll tell you is your counselor is gonna tell us what happened at school. So you also don't have to waste any portion of your 650 words telling us you were virtual, then you were in person, then you were hybrid, then you had great internet, then you didn't have great internet because all of your siblings and your parents were at home with you. And then it was raining in Seattle and the internet was terrible, right? You don't have to, to do that for us. Your counselor is gonna give that to us in regards to what happened at your school. All right, take it away, Emily. Thanks, Karen. So Again, to kind of just emphasize everything that we've we've kind of covered so far, a, a majority of, of, of what we're looking at is really to learn about you as a student. So a lot of the times our students really get hung up on, I have to have the best essay in the entire world in order to get admitted. You know, as you're looking at some of the institutions and you're looking at admit rates and admit percentages, and you're looking at how many students are offered admission into this, this school every single year, you might get hung up on how do I really help myself stand apart with my essay, knowing that I'm up against so many other students. But there's really no, like Karin said, there's no magic formula. There's no magic, you know, potion that we can say, do this and you're going to get in. Ultimately, the only, the best thing that we can do and best thing we can encourage you is to be yourself. There's no one who can tell your story better than you. And so that secret of how to get in and how to, you know, write the best essay is write your story write your story how you want to write your story. So 
we're going to kind of talk a little bit on how do you get started. So I know for me personally, writing big essays, even writing long emails nowadays can be a very daunting task. And when you're faced with something that can have such an impact on your admission decision and, and, and your, your future, essentially, it's going to seem an even bigger task than a, maybe a normal essay would be when you're in school. And so there's a couple things that we recommend just to get you started, get the, you know, get the juices flowing a little bit. You know, you may want to take this in chunks. You may want to look at this over the course of a Saturday morning or a Sunday when you have a little bit more time to just relax, find a comfortable place and get a nice cup of coffee, a nice cup of tea, whatever it is. If you're, if you're an energy drink person, you could have those as well. Anything to help really just kind of get you settled and get you into the mindset of starting to write this essay. So as you get settled into your space and everything, start by doing some brainstorming exercises. The link that's uh, on this, uh, this slide here is actually fantastic because it, it does bring you to five different exercises that you can do to help you to figure out who you are, the core of your, you know, your being as a person, and what are some of the things that you value and are important to you that may help you in trying to identify what you want to write about for your essay. So some of these would be, again, who are the core of your being? 20 different things that you would put in that essence of yourself. You know, looking at the, your values, what are the top 10 values that you have, right? And then start narrowing that list down because 10 is a lot and you only have a certain number of words that you can use. So how do we narrow this down a little bit further? How do we make it so that it's emphasized and focused on just a few of those core values that you want to get across to your institutions? Thinking about different facts, uh, you know, and fun figures from your life, right? Think about fun activities that you've done or random, you know, situations that you've encountered or some silly th moment in your life that you think is really part of who you are. And make sure to jot those down as well. So is there any, and then as you're looking at the, all of these things, start thinking about is there anything that goes together? Are there themes that are coming up again and again and again as we're going through these brainstorming exercises that you want to, that you think are going to make for a good essay? Is there something that's really coming up that you're like, yep, this is it. And so take it and kind of put them into chunks, put them into buckets, um, and then start figuring out where you want to go with this. And as you kind of generate that content, as you generate the idea of what you may want to be writing about, that's when you want to start thinking about the structure. So again, telling your story is going to be unique to you. So if you're, a, as Karen mentioned, if you're a funny person, you want to throw in some humor, you may want to write in a different style than someone who wants a more formal kind of approach to, to their essay. So, you know, think about, do you want this to be a narrative? Do you want this to be a montage or a storyline? Um, do you want to take it more of a creative approach? I've seen students write it as, you know, diary entries. I've had students who've written their essays as, you know, newspaper editorials. So, you know, you can take this opportunity to find a unique approach only if that report, approach reflects you as an individual. Again, we can't emphasize this enough. It's all reflecting you as a person. And then just start writing. There's nothing better. Just start writing. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if it's all over the page and you're like sentence after sentence, just start writing. Because the more that you can get down on paper, the more you can kind of dial things in and figure out this is the direction that I want to go. And then next up is kind of just to kind of summarize everything so far for, for you guys is, is again, if we had to like put these into big bullet points, just a quick takeaways for you of do's and don'ts with your college essay. So again, considering your content and your form, right? Again, this is your opportunity, your unique opportunity to tell your unique story. Make sure that you're considering both of those. Tell us something that we haven't learned about you yet. I encourage all of my students to really think creatively with their essay because here at Lake Forest, we do interviews with our students. And so I'm going to ask you about, you know, your hobbies and your activities and things like that. We can tell those from your applications. We can tell though, you know, uh, your academic performance. We can talk about your involvement. We can see that from like the common application or everything. 
But this is, again, your essay is something that really is encompassing of you. So if there's something that you haven't told us yet, this is a great place to do that. Connecting your essay to your values. Uh, obviously, from those brainstorming exercises, you're going to be able to see those, those values that you kind of have at the top of your list. And so thinking about how do you tie those and what's important, how do you demonstrate those values to the colleges that you're interested in? Um, because again, a lot of us are looking to see if your values match the values of our institutions as well. So how do you demonstrate that within your essay? Make sure that you are specific. Um, I can't emphasize this enough with, with, again, having word limits, you know, character limits, all of that. Don't beat it around the bush, just go right for it. Be direct, you know, make sure that you are very specific in what you are addressing. Um, that way, you know, you can get right to the core of your essay very quickly. Again, be active in your, in your voice, make sure that you're using those verbs, always the best. Um, start long, cut back, and refine as needed, okay? So again, when we talked about writing and just starting to write earlier, that's it, just start writing. And if it's like seven pages, okay, that's a great start. That's a lot more than we need, but that's okay. Start big, dial it back, and continue to refine. This should be a process. It shouldn't be something that you can immediately crank out in an hour or so. And if you can, always proofread, share it with others and kind of get a little bit of feedback on if there's other things that you may be able to tweak, add, and kind of get some additional perspective as you are writing this essay. And then thinking outside of the box. So again, the opportunity to be your authentic self is what you want to look for. So any way that you can do that, whether that is through a creative writing style or maybe a funny story or something that is very unique to you, Think creatively, think, how, think about how do you wanna deliver that message to us in a way that really reflects you. And now to the don'ts. These are the things that we definitely don't encourage. <laughs> um, don't waste your money on the best college essay books, honestly. Um, you know, again, there, it's okay for a resource if you wanna get some ideas, but at the end of the day, they aren't going to tell you anything that you don't you can't tell us about yourself, right? And so they're not gonna tell you anything differently than you know, any generic information, right? They, they're just gonna tell you to write and write and write and be formal, but the, at the end of the day, they're not gonna tell you how to be yourself. So take those away. Don't let your parent or your teacher or your counselor or whomever writes or over edit your essay. And, and, you know, we see this pretty often. Again, we can't emphasize this enough. This is your story. This is not their story. This is not their time to, you know, uh, brag on all the great accomplishments and everything that, that we know that you have. So let them read it. Let them edit just a little bit, but don't let them over edit. Don't let them write the essay for you. Make sure that it's telling your story. Don't just restate the essay prompt. That's not, that's not exciting, that's boring. You know, that's not fun. <laughs> so restating that essay prompt doesn't do anything for us. It doesn't help us in any way. Don't rely solely on spell check. Actually read through word by word. Take a break, come back to it. Maybe give it a day or two, come back to it. Read it word through word. Spell check misses things. It misses things often. As a victim of that, I know it does. So make sure you're not relying solely on spell check. Don't use a thesaurus on every single word. We can tell. We can tell when you use the thesaurus on everything. Don't use a school essay. We also can tell if your essay, we don't want to read your AP US history essay. As great as I'm sure it is, it doesn't tell us about you. That is, that's, the, that's the bottom line there. And finally, don't skip the essay. It's it, as much of a daunting task as it is and as, as scary as sometimes the essay can be for students. It is an um, immensely important part of the application process. And so skipping it really just says a lot more about you and what you're committing to than you know, just writing an essay to begin with. And with that, I will pass it over. Awesome. Thanks so much, Emily. Uh, so in this slide, in these next few slides, we're gonna talk a little bit about the supplemental essays. 
and just kind of how you can prepare to write a supplemental essay, right? So uh, the question as stated, what about the supplemental essays? Why are they important? Why are they needed? Why do schools have them? And what type of schools have uh, supplemental essays? Um, ultimately, uh, the supplemental essay can do a lot of different things in the context of that school. So some schools will have essay questions that are very much the typical, why do you want to attend this school, right? In this particular case, student or college admissions professional uh, offices in uh, that school are, are really looking to get a understanding of how, uh, what kind of research have you done into us as an institution? Why are you interested us in, in, in this in our that particular institution? And um, ultimately, what is this education that you'll be receiving? What will it uh, do for you as a student, right? Um, so you will have those general ones, right? Or those ones that are like, what is an extracurricular that is being meaningful to you? So uh, in a lot of instances, schools will have those ones that kind of get a, a kind of a, a kind of a more 3D background on who you are, what you're bringing to that institution. And then, of course, some schools will have like supplemental essay questions that are very much like uh, foundationally about that institution and their community and how you fit in into that institution. Right. So at Seattle University, I'll kind of use us as a metric here. Um, but ultimately, uh, we have a very uh, a campus community that's super inclusive that that is coming to Seattle University for a multiple different things right not only just to have an education but also to find a community right to be able to think about how they're using their education to give back to their communities and of course what they're going to be potentially doing after they graduate so at Seattle U we try to have questions that give us an idea about uh, mission fit. How do you fit in with our campus's mission? Um, and ultimately, who you are as a person from uh, your cultural background, your identity, where you come from. So to give you an example, one of the questions we have looks at what is a food that you're very connected to and what is a story behind that, that particular food? So what we found is that uh, talking as a team is that food really gets us, uh, brings us together. It gathers us, but also uh, there's so much different fruits from so much different cultures and backgrounds. And, and every single student has something that, that really connects them to that particular dish that tells us more about who they are, excuse me, who they are, but also how they will be able to connect into our campus community. So that's kind of just one thing, right? Um, we've, oh, we've had questions that look into uh, our mission statement and what parts of our mission statement do you connect with, right? Because at Seattle, you're very mission driven and there's a lot of schools out there that are very mission driven that want to see how do you connect in with that particular particular mission. Um, and then of course, uh, that mission component, there's the other aspect now for supplemental essays where like schools want to see how do you think, right? So they'll have questions that are very philosophical or they'll have questions that want to just like have you problem solve essentially. Um, for example, I know University of Chicago, I was doing like research on supplemental essays has a question about like what is so uh, crazy about pie or what's so easy about pie. So you could take that in so many different directions, right? You can literally talk about how easy it is to make a pie, literally talk about how easy it is to, to kind of like remember the like 3.14, whatever it is, right? Like you can take that in a lot of different directions, but ultimately that school is using that question as a chance to kind of learn more about like, how do you think, right? Like what are, how do you problem solve those types of things? And of course there's a question here, cats have nine lives, Pac-Man has three lives and radioactive isotopes have half lives. How many lives does something else conceptual or actual have and why, right? So philosoph philosophical questions like that or questions that are really trying to get an in-depth dive into how you think, right? So a lot of those like big Ivy League schools or like U Chicago, they really place an emphasis on this because they want to see how you problem solve through problem solve your way through a question. Where are you coming into this particular question from, from like the back, from the standpoint of like writing this question, right? So supplemental essays are doing a lot of different things for many different schools and every school is using it differently, right? Some schools just want to know how do you connect to our institution? What is this institution going to be able to provide for you, right? Um, what is this major that you're interested in? What does that mean for you? Or, you know, uh, of course, the mission fit question is the big one. How do you fit into that campus community? What are you bringing to our campus community? And then lastly, like, how do you think, right? Philosophical questions and things of that nature. So 
At the end of the day, uh, there's a lot of reasons that a, a, a college will ask a specific supplemental essay, um, but those are just the big ones that I wanted to mention. And also, I will say that some students that we've had would like literally like copy and paste their personal statement into the supplemental. And I would recommend not doing this because college admissions professionals 100% read every single uh, supplemental essay, right? I think students just kind of figure that like the supplemental is like, uh, oh, it's just a supplemental. It's not really like the important one. Um, but it is just as important as your personal statement, right? The personal statement gives us a narrative of who you are, and it's kind of the general questions that allow, allow us to learn more about you. The supplemental essay is very specific to that school and allows schools to kind of interject something about them into that particular question that a student can answer that gives the college the admissions office a little bit more of an understanding of how you can come to that institution, right? So don't copy and paste them. Uh, you know, you know, sometimes students will have a personal statement that has like, you know, I've had, I've read many personal statements where the student was like, you know, I think I'd be such a great fit at the University of Washington. So clearly they want to go to UW, uh, but uh, they will copy and paste that three times into our supplemental essay part. So I'm reading literally the student wants to go to UW three times. So Again, there's mistakes that can happen on the personal statement like that, that can end up bleeding into your supplemental essays. Um, but also we just wanna make sure that you're using those, those supplemental essays as a chance to really create something unique that's specific to those school, to that school. So really make sure that you're, you're taking that into account. Uh, perfect. Next slide here. So how do I research, right, about this? Where do I find an answer to these questions Sometimes we'll have a question that will be like, tell us a little bit about what kind of clubs interest you at our institution, right? Um, and sometimes it can be tough. Like, you know, at Seattle U, we have a circus club, right? So like you would never know that unless you like did your research on it. So it's very important to make sure you're looking into how you can do the research for that to be able to make sure you're presenting the best essay possible in that case. So there's a couple of different methods and how you can do this, right? So we'll go over a couple of years. So obviously social media in the age of social media, pretty much every admissions office and institution has a social media, whether it be an Instagram, a Twitter, a Facebook. Um, and uh, a lot of the time schools are posting a lot of unique things about their institution, right? You have schools posting about a unique research opportunity that a professor is providing or is doing. Um, you will have schools talking about a specific club that is very unique to that institution that might interest you. Um, browse through those social media feeds, check out what you can learn a little bit more about that institution through the social media um, feeds. And typically uh, social media feeds will, will kind of link to like a blog on the page about like a professor doing a research opportunity or a particular major or a campus. So use those social media feeds to kind of learn more about that institution. There's also the class syllabi here. So the class syllabi is another uh, component um, where you can learn more about a particular course. So certain courses can be offered at that institution that are unique to that school. You can use a syllabi, you can look into that department's website and kind of sometimes school professors will have like a, their own website that links to like the syllabus, syllabus or syllabi. Um, and so you can do research on what does that class provide to kind of give you an understanding of, oh, like I'm really interested in that. And that connects back to me because of this thing, right? And you can write about that. Um, read reviews, right? So there's a lot of different like reviews out there for institutions that students write. Uh, one for one example, there's a company called Niche that kind of lets students write reviews about that institution and kind of gives their feedback or what their experience has been like. It's always important to kind of use that, right, to kind of get the student perspective. And of course, a lot of the student perspective can be very much connected back to you and what you're interested in. And so use those reviews, look into those as well. And then, of course, tour the school. So typically at schools, they'll have a student ambassador or a, a current student giving the tour at a college. I'm not 100% familiar. that I know at our school. Most schools will have a student tour guide doing the tour. And that student will go in-depth into the institution. They can give you more in-depth uh, in insight into a particular major. Oh, like what clubs are you interested? What clubs are you currently doing on that campus? Or like 
hey, like, what do you do for fun in the like in that college or throughout the week? Those are really great ways for you to get an understanding of the institution, but also just touring the school, school gives you a very in-depth insight into that school in a way that you cannot get any other way, right? We've been doing these like virtual tours over the past year due to COVID-19. And, and one of the biggest feedbacks we hear is like, oh man, I wish I could just be there. I just want to get a feel of it. Being on the campus allows you to get a lot more unique perspective into that campus, but also will influence your supplemental insights in the essays will give you a lot of important anecdotes that you can use in your essays that will let you kind of tell that admissions officer like, hey, I really like this school. This is why this is the things I'm interested in. And also, here's why it connects back to me and connects to my life and where I'm headed. Perfect. So that's what we have about supplemental questions, uh, essay questions. And now Okay, we're, we're getting close here to the end. We want to remind you, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the in the chat, the question and answer chat, and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, somebody did post a question about the difference between the main essay and supplemental essays, and I think Yovel answered that. Um, if you need more, feel free to get in touch with either of the three of us. Our emails are there. Um, and so we also are going to tell you a little bit about our all time favorite essay um, as a way to leave you with some thoughts about um, what we've enjoyed and a sense for what the, the topic has been. Uh, so Emily, you want to share? Sure. So um, this was actually from one of my students that enrolled um, this this fall here, here at the college, but um, she did a uh, social media experiment um, during quarantine using uh, dating apps such as Tinder and Bumble uh, to learn about the stock market and finance. And so she was trying to uh, prove that these channels can uh, create opportunities for actual productive dialogue with people. And um, it was a fascinating fascinating story. <laughs> okay. All right. See, and, and, and could anyone else have written that story, that essay? Nope. Likely no, right? So no one else, neither of the three of us in this room would ever have the opportunity to say, I've read that before, right? No way. Okay. Yovel. So thanks, Karen. Uh, yeah, my favorite essay that I ever read, it was a couple of years ago, a student kind of went into why breakfast was the most important meal for them uh, by explaining how each thing they ate kind of connected to something they did throughout the day, right? So like I ate pancakes that really connected to why I did so well in my AP uh, math, like AP, like BC calculus uh, test, right? Um, I, I drank orange juice and that gave me enough energy to get through the ASB leadership uh, um, ASB leadership meeting, right? Or, um, you know, like the smell of cinnamon really got me waking up and really influenced me to kind of get out of my bed and push me to start my day on the right note. So kind of like there's two things with the, the essay I really liked, using descripting words like that to kind of create a visual for the, for the reader. So for me, it was like, wow, like I can't wait to eat breakfast tomorrow morning. Uh, but also um, I loved how they connected it back to um, the things they were doing in their day. So ultimately it just kind of showed me like a personality of a student, right? And you can tell they were really quirky, like really, really energetic. And it kind of gave me an idea of like, oh, this is who this person is. And this is why right, this is important, but also like, hey, like I think they would be such a great fit here at Seattle U because of their personality just influenced throughout their essay. So that was a really great one. If you've been paying attention, it seems to me that food is a thing at Seattle University. <laughs> or let's see, it's currently 1240 in Seattle. Your bell's hungry for lunch, right? One yes, of those two things. It is, is yeah. Here. We love food over here for sure. <laughs> yeah. And having just been in Seattle for a big conference, it is one of my favorite places to go because the food is good. Um, okay, so my favorite essay, which happened in the very first year that I worked in college admissions, and Emily's heard this story before, so she has to, she has to hear it again. Um, I was working at Beloit. I was new. I was young. I was nervous, um, probably even more nervous than the students applying to Beloit. Uh, my husband, uh, brand new husband, actually was coaching at Beloit, and he was the recruiting coordinator, so he was in charge of recruiting new students. Great. Men's basketball. 
there was a student that he was working on and I was working on that was a very, very good player, charming person, like really, you know, he was easy to talk to, but he was a bit of a borderline student from an academic standpoint, right? So he wasn't a knock it out of the park, absolutely positively. There was a little bit of a concern about his admissibility. I had met with him, I had said to him, listen, your essay is going to it's going to pay, play a pretty big role in this um, application process for you, the admissions process. So by all means, don't, don't waste this opportunity. Okay, great. So his essay came in, his application came in, and this is back in the day when it was actually on paper. I am that old. And I took it into my office and I opened it up and I read the first part of the application and then I got to the essay and the essay was a page and a half of words, like just words. There was no capitalization, there was no punctuation, it was like words. And I had an immediate reaction of, did he not understand what I told him? Does he not really care? Did something really wonky happen with his computer? Will my husband still be married to me tomorrow? Right? Because I was like, oh my God. So I walked away. I walked out of my office. I was like, I can't, I can't deal with this. Like, oh my gosh. So I went for a walk. I came back. I was like, okay, got to get it done. Open it up. Very first line of all the words said, I'm going to use this essay as a time to describe 10 minutes in my life what I was thinking. And I don't think in capitalization and punctuation. So all I had to do is read the first paragraph. I wouldn't have been having a heart attack, but I didn't. So I read this line and I'm like, okay, this might actually be kind of clever. He described 10 minutes of time before his team took the floor to play for the state championship game in the state of Illinois. And he wove several things throughout the essay, one time nine minutes to go, eight minutes to go, seven minutes to go. So the reader, you're, you're getting all amped up. He talked about his family. He was the youngest of three boys. He was gonna go off to college. What the heck were his parents gonna do every Friday and Saturday night? Because there were gonna be no basketball players at home. He talked about his teammates. He played with a team, many of whom had played together since fifth grade and none of them were going to college together. And so what was that gonna feel like and how was he gonna handle that? And then he also wove in some very technical aspects of his game. He had been charged with guarding the all-time leading scorer in the state of Illinois. And how embarrassing it would be if he allowed this opposing player to score his typical 35 points. And how was he gonna prevent that? It was brilliant. I mean, the, the, the creativity of it, the thinking, getting a, a picture of what would actually take place in his brain in 10 minutes before this huge game, he was thinking about these things. Um, it, it was absolutely lovely. And so he did come to my school. I am still married, 38 years of being married. And I said to him, was this hard for you to write? And he said, absolutely not. It was hard for me to think about what I was gonna write about. But once I started writing, it was easy. And so I, I think, you know, that that's something that we haven't talked a whole lot about either. This shouldn't be hard, right? You're talking about you. Once you get the topic and what you're going to do, I, I would tell you it won't be difficult. Okay, we have one minute left. Any last minute questions? As our facilitator told us, this will be taped. You can look at it again because you're missing us already tomorrow. Um, but also, here's our contact information. You can contact any of us about your essay, about the process. You don't have to be interested in our school, although it would be great if you were, but we're still going to respond to you. Thank you, everyone. And I'm just going to share my screen real quick at the end. Thanks for joining us today. When you log off, there'll be a quick window for a five question survey. 
We really appreciate it. If you would answer those questions, it certainly helps us here at StriveScan. Remember there are other sessions, please feel free to visit those sessions. And remember that a recording will be available of this at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. I also put that in the chat and hopefully you got a chance to take a look at that. Thank you today to all of our presenters. Have a great night. Thank you.